So talk to me about any, any questions anybody has, or any questions or comments about the uh, about the program. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some guest speakers on here throughout the week that are gonna be fun to uh, to be able to hear their stories. Some Seattle basketball players, see some guys that <clears throat> came from Seattle that played college basketball and some that made it to the NBA and some that are coaching. They're going to come on and talk to you guys here later on this week and next week. Do you guys feel like it was pretty straightforward in terms of the explanations, in terms of what we want you guys to be working on? On the videos, it's nice to have the videos too because you can go back and rewatch them and see, you know, exactly how it's been, been broken down, pay attention to the footwork, the details, all that. How do you get sick handles? You got to dribble that ball everywhere, man. Biggest thing, <clears throat> biggest thing about becoming a big ball handler, or excuse me, a good ball handler is, is being able to dribble the basketball without thinking about it, right? So if you have to think about the moves and controlling the basketball and not losing the basketball, it's going to be extremely difficult to be a good ball handler. Right. So if I'm having to worry about losing the basketball and finding where the ball is, I'm missing all the reads that are happening. You know, basketball is a split second sport. There's always the next play is going on, even within the same possession. Right. The floor is changing. The offense is moving. The defense is moving. So if you're not moving with if you're not moving with the flow of the game, the flow of that offensive set or defensive set, then you're going to miss stuff. So the biggest thing about ball handling is is practice. Speed dribbles, low speed dribbles, um, and then once you kind of have a basic fundamental the fundamentals down, um, creativity and confidence is huge, right? So being willing to make mistakes, especially when you're younger, and trying things at practice, and trying different moves, and being creative, and the biggest thing is you want to be deceptive, right? Good ball handlers are tricky; they're they're elusive, if you will. So you want to work on being deceptive to where they can't really follow you. When you're on offense, you have the controls, you have the joystick, right? So you're in control. The defense has to follow you. If you go right, they have to go right with you. If you go left, they got to go left with you. So making sure that you're working on a low handle. And then when then once you feel like you have a good handle, now it's time to go try it against other other people, right? So see what you can do while still, you know, being smart and still playing team basketball and not, but test your handles against when people pressure you, try to counter. Always have a quick counter, right? When you lose the ball, learn from it. Don't make the same mistake 15,000 times and not learn learn from it. You're going to turn the ball over. The, you're going to dribble off your foot, and then you're going to get some people a couple times. Figure out why you got certain people, right? So you got the biggest thing is confidence, and then practice, 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 dribble and shooting, Dribbling and shooting, there's really no way to get better besides doing it thousands of times. How often should I be doing ball handling and strength and conditioning in a day? So our workouts for uh, intermediate and uh, advanced, we have two strength and conditioning workouts a week. For beginners, we have one a week. These are just the minimums and what's recommended. I always say the more you do, the better you're going to be. As long as you're not compromising yourself and trying to, you know, have bad form and you're not putting yourself in danger, the more you work, by and large, is the quicker you're gonna get results and the better you're gonna be. So I think, you know, depending on your age, if you wanna go past two workout, two strength and conditioning workouts a week, especially when since everybody has a lot of downtime and everybody's gonna be in the house and once you handle your school requirements and your chores from home and whatnot, should be spending a lot of time. This is what you wanna do. You should spend a lot of your free time in terms of taking care of your body and getting smarter. So to answer your question in terms of, I think you could do ball handling every day. You know, for those of you guys who have a, gar a garage, I know a lot of parents may not be fans of dribbling on the hardwood and whatnot, but if you can go in the driveway or the garage, work on ball handling, look at a bunch of the different videos that are on there as much as you can, twice a day even. But again, it goes back to people have to, you have to do it only as much as you want to do it, right? So it can't be parent driven. It can't be someone else driven. You have to do it because you understand the benefits of doing it on a regular basis. How many hours until my arms get tired, right? So with ball handling, you always want to have a wide stance so your legs should get tired too, um, but it should be a lot of quick wrist movement, right? It shouldn't be a lot of shoulder movement. It should be a little bit of elbows and a, little, a lot of wrists, quick pats on the ball. So um, I would say just do it as, as long as you can. Really, there's no rhyme or reason. You know, 10 minutes isn't going to be enough. Five minutes isn't going to be enough. I think everybody knows that in terms of how little you should do it, but really there's no maximum. 
Deb, your court's wet on the rain. Is there is there going to be enough stuff that I can do in the garage with a hoop? And that's going to take some creativity. So what I've been telling people that don't have access to a hoop but do have access to a garage is I have them go do all of the motions of the drill and then you just don't shoot the ball, right? So all the footwork into a jump shot, all of the finishes. So you may not have a, a whole half court space in your garage. So you may have to shrink and modify some of the drills. And this is where creativity is going to come in, right? We can't just say, oh, well, I don't have access to an elite facility and I don't have a brand new gym or I don't have access to this and then say, well, I'm not going to do it, right? Each of you, depending on your living situations and what you guys have access to, you have to be creative. You guys are going to have to take what Local Hoops Virtual Academy is going to give you in terms of um, the workout guides. And then you have to think, OK, well, what's realistic for me to be able to do? Maybe my maybe there's not a court I can get to. Maybe I don't have a garage. Maybe we're in a condo. We're on the second floor. I don't have those type of access. It's been raining two days straight. We had to figure things out, right? So if that means you may have to wait and not only start your workout until Wednesday and then go Wednesday through Sunday, then we need to do that. If that means that we can start on Monday, you want to start kind of forecast your week. Um, being in Seattle, you ne necessarily can't always rely on the weather people, right, to be right on everything. But we want to do some planning behind this. We set the whole week in advance so people can have time to look at it, plan. Think about what the week looks like ahead of them. And then, you know, we want to plan our days out. Everybody remember this. So for the reaction drill, Gavin got 20 points in 11 minutes. And this is all going to go upon honesty, right? If somebody comes and tells me they got 20 points in 30 seconds, then, you know, we're going to give you the little, the stank guy. You got, everybody got to be honest. So think about, so Gavin, you need to make sure you're writing that down in your journal, right? So a lot of people are asking me kind of what the digital journal is at the end of about halfway through the week. Um, our web web developer team is going to have a form to where everybody will be able to submit their um, their homework for the week and turn it in for the coaches to look at. But your digital journal is very simple. It's just you either write it down in your phone, you take a note. The reason why we like it digital is so that you, it's saved in a file, right? If in case the paper gets ripped or wet, you know, it's kind of it's 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 a more secure spot <clears throat> to save your documents and track it. So we like everything being digital. It's also easier if you need to send it to somebody for it to be digital. It's just a quick email. Um, it's always nice to have things in digital. How can we support local hoops during this COVID situation? That's a good question. Um, well, we can do the everybody. We always want to get as many people in the local hoops is, was designed in order to help our community. I'm from Bellevue and my parents still live in Bellevue. Um, spread the word about if you if you guys feel this is a good program then we would ask that you just spread the spread the information to anybody you think it could help um but those of you guys we don't we're, local hoops are going to be okay when this is all over you know we're going to get back to, to rolling we're going to be stronger than we ever were um i appreciate everybody's concern um but you know we're take we're we're, we're not just sitting here and, and letting you know letting this situation happen to us we're trying to be proactive we have a lot of incredible basketball minds in our academy from a coaching standpoint and we're putting our mind together daily in terms of how we can help kids how we can help everybody how we can still get better uh, we have a passion as coaches to get better too it's not just the kids getting better right the reason all of us coaches had our playing days and then now we're coaching because that's how much we love the game, right? So we now we know that we made certain mistakes along the way. So now it's time to give back to the next generation, right? So now it's time for the next generation to go get the tools and tricks that maybe that can expedite their process and they can not make some of the mistakes that, that, that we did. Uh, mistakes are inevitable growing up. I'm not saying mistakes are bad. Um, but if we can help people along the way and we can make it easier on them or we can help them answer questions that maybe we didn't get access to until we were older then that's the that's the move so i appreciate you asking though that's a good question coach dustin has been a, an amazing 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 resource for the academy an amazing advisor to these typically work with a lot of the older kids um for those of you guys who are interested in more personal growth and development check out soul focus man i mean it's been i've done it personally as a coach, um, I've had other coaches do it, and it's really something that really changes your mindset in terms of how you approach things. Um, even you know our younger athletes, some of the stuff may be a little bit over some of our younger younger athletes' heads. But I always, I'm always a fan of challenging, of giving our youth too much as opposed to not enough. Right? I'd rather show them an advanced drill or an advanced advanced video that makes them think and it challenges their mind than give them something. 
that isn't as challenging because we think they're not old enough to conceptualize it. So shout out to Dustin, man. He's been he's been a brother of mine for years. I worked with his son when he was at Seattle Academy. I think Dustin is uh, is Kalen the all time assist leader at, at SAS. Let the people know, man. Uh, Coach Kalen also went played through local hoops and um now he coaches with Dustin. He has our 15U Alpha team. I mean, you ask anybody in local hoops, any of the high school players that have been coached under Dustin, and I challenge you to find somebody that doesn't have something good to say about D. Man, that's my brother. Dustin asks, what can athletes do during this time to improve their mental aspect of the game? Well, <clears throat> that, was some, that was a question that a lot of the coaches had for us um, in terms of what can we provide and what can we offer to – the kids aside from just basketball, right? Like a lot of people, in my opinion, come to local hoops because they're a fan of our coaching style, right? Our coaching philosophy, we always try to be consistent with this. And you're going to hear me say it a lot over the years is firm, but fair, right? So disciplined, um, but, you know, understand that that good things are going to happen, bad things are going to happen. So let's be fair across the board. Uh, we do put some basketball, um, we did put some basketball, um, videos, some IQ videos, and we're also going to do some film studies. So I'm excited about this. I did a I did a film study on the 2014 Western Conference Finals with uh, Houston and Portland. So James Harden and Damian Lillard, and we did um, a short like five minute breakdown of the first quarter, talking about pick and rolls. And I think you guys are going to like it. So we're going to start doing like one or two of those a week, and then we'll send them out to you guys the videos and tell them what you think about it. So tell us if if you learn anything from it. But the biggest thing to answer your question, I think to obviously follow our basketball IQ videos that we're going to post out, but get away during this time. I know highlights are great and they're entertaining, but if you're trying to learn, get away from watching highlight videos, right? Try to go look up old games either on YouTube or I know Gavin said earlier that um, the NBA TV or just ESPN or whatever is playing old um, playoff games. When you watch games, Watch what's happening away from the ball. Okay, I'll say that again. If you want to watch basketball games, you want to learn from the basketball games, watch what's happening on the court with the people, what the people are doing who don't have the basketball, right? It's very easy to watch the guy who's going between the legs, between the legs, cross over in and out and hits a tough jump shot or drives the basket and dunks on somebody, right? Watch the rotations, watch them. That's where you'll see the mistakes. And that's where you start to question yourself for those of you guys who are trying to up your basketball IQ. Well, why did he do that? Was that a mistake or was that something right? And the more questions you can ask yourself while watching videos and watching high level basketball, the better you're going to be. Put me on record saying this. WNBA basketball has more skilled precision basketball and execution than NBA basketball. Put me on record saying that, okay? The WNBA doesn't have the athleticism that the NBA has, obviously. So they have to, in order to be successful, they have to be more fine-tuned and perfected in their craft and their skills, right? So if you know that you don't have a 40-inch vertical and you're not 6'11 and touch the top of the backboard, in order to be efficient on that court, you need to be sharp, Right. With your execution, your plays have to be ran to a T. Your defensive rotations have to be crisp. Your shooting has to be elite. So if you watch WNBA basketball, yes, you're not going to have a bunch of dunks and, and as many highlights. But if you're a student of the game and you really have a have a good understanding of the game, you're going to watch. It's like poetry. Right. Like I went to a storm practice. and I was a storm practice player when I was in high. Uh, no, after college. And I used to work with them and I'd be there, you know, kind of defense and I'd be on their practice team and they would just they would torch the guys as a team. Right. Like physically, I was stronger than some of the players and whatnot. But I said this earlier, the higher level you play, the less physical abilities matter unless you're just a freak athlete like Zion and LeBron. The, the less physical, you know, attributes really matter. And it's more about IQ. Timing, when to do what, and deception. I'm telling you, that's what it's all about. Watch WNBA basketball. I don't care if you're a boy or a girl. Um, what film do you recommend for us to watch and learn from and put in our game? Do you mean 
watch game film like what are what are some good games to watch i can go i can do some research i can put that out there that's a good question that's a real good question i'll look i'll try to look up some games on youtube and i'll talk to the coaches in terms of what are some good classic games but if you just search up classic look the circuit search up on youtube classic you can do ncaa men's basketball games you can do women's basketball games you can do classic nba games um look up so you can look that up and then i'll look up some too what are some dominant power forward center moves that, that we big guys can work on during the quarantine? Okay, Gavin, I'm going to help you out. Write this down. Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. Look up those guys and look up their, look up their highlights. Look, and then lastly, look up Hakeem Olajuwon. It's old school for you. Hakeem Olajuwon, okay? Played for the Rockets for the most part. Um, look up their, look up their footwork. So when you look up their heart, that's something you can look at their highlights. You can even look up their drills, um, watch their feet. Okay. So watch their setup, watch their body. Tim Duncan was famous for the, um, been famous for his bank shots. Uh, he was also just a super high IQ big. That was tough. Um, and then look up when you go to Elijah one, pay attention to his feet, right? So the biggest thing with big man is that they don't feel like they need to be able to dribble the ball or, you know, they may not be bringing the ball up the court and need all the crossovers and whatnot, but they still need to be able to dribble, pass, and at least shoot from mid-range. So those are some big things. Gavin, I would I would have you stay within 15 feet or so. Um, you're going to be super tall, man. Your dad's 6'10", 6'11" whatever he is, um, but you're going to be a tall kid, right? So you need to make sure that you're working around the basket and perfecting that. And then a lot of it is a mindset, right? Being physical on every set on every possession. Coach Dustin, what is your biggest lesson from Kobe's way of life and career? Mm, Mamba mentality, man, that was a tough month almost for me when I found out about Kobe, man, it was, uh, it was uh, put things in perspective, man. Nobody's invincible. Even the people that were in the NBA, people that retired, um, you know, they thought Kobe was, you know, invincible. He was the Superman while he was playing. He was Superman when he went off, and you almost took him for granted, you know, and I feel like everybody, that's kind of that cliche that everybody, you know, you never miss somebody as much. You never realize how good they are and how beneficial they are to your life. Even if you never met them before until they're gone, you don't have them, right? Um but D, to answer your question, the biggest lesson, um, Kobe is a huge, 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 huge reason um, that I developed the work ethic that I had. I mean, I studied Kobe. I, t I talked about this on Saturday um, at my at the, when we did the live session is that um, Kobe was the guy people. But somebody asked, you know, how do you work on one on one moves and reading defense when um, when you can't play, when you're supposed to be social distancing, right? Which is a good question. And my response was that you need to have imagination, right? So now you're working with imaginary defenders. As funny as that may sound, the best players in the world ever all did this, okay? They were at a, a gym, a park, a hoop by themselves, and they imagined a, an elite defender guarding them and they made moves over and over and over and over again against elite defenders that were in their mind, right? Even on the elite team, I beat the first defender. Now there's help defense. Now I'm playing against the Lakers and I beat, I beat Kobe off the dribble. And now Shaq, I've got, I can't just lay the ball up. Shaq's seven, seven feet, seven, one. I've got to go get it high off the glass, right? So the more you can imagine things and the more you can watch and understand the game, the better that experience is going to be for you. You can't just be an excuse, right? Well, I don't have anybody to play with, so I'm going to sit on the couch and play Fortnite. You can, but when we get back to working, we'll see who was doing what. So um, that's my biggest, I, that's, I would say the biggest lesson from Kobe's career, his way of life and his career was his insane work ethic. Um, I definitely tried to copy all of that. He, for some reason, when he said it, you know, it just resonated differently than when everyone else said it in terms of how hard you had to work and, not really making excuses of why you couldn't get things done. So, um, you know, that was definitely the big the big thing I took away from his career. Anybody have any other questions on the program? We're going to go live again um, at on Wednesday uh, for everybody. So anybody who has questions, if you if you have any questions that come up, 
write them down. You can email them to us or you can save them for the live session. So the live session on Wednesday, okay? The beginner group is going to go 5 to 5.20. This is on Wednesday, p.m. Pacific Standard Time. The intermediate group is going to go 5.30 to 5.50. And we got to make sure we stand on time because we got people before and after us. So um, intermediate is 5.30 to 5.50. And then the high school or the advanced group is going to be 6 o'clock to 6.20. So we need to make sure that we... You know, we come ready. We go through the full week. Everybody should at least take a take look through the full week, even if you haven't done it yet. Make sure you know what you're what's expected of you before it's time to do it. So that way we have questions. The reason why we scheduled a live session during the middle of the week is so as you're doing your homework, you can check in with us and get live feedback. So take advantage of this stuff, man. Uh, pick our brains, ask as many questions. Uh, some of my coaches used to get annoyed with me in terms of the amount of questions I ask, but I ask. When I was a player, and I still do, about different things, I always ask why, why this, why that, and it's not that I'm challenging or disagreeing, I genuinely want to know, right? So don't be afraid to ask your coaches why. If you ask a coach, a local hoops coach why, and they get mad at you, you tell me about it, and I'll make sure you get the answer. So all my coaches know, you know, this is what this is what we need, right? This is we need. We want our kids to be engaged. We want our kids to ask questions. This is what we're here for. We coaches love passionate kids, right? I don't, we do, on all honesty, it's great to have talented kids. I'd rather have a passionate kid than a talented kid every day. I've had to kick kids out of the program that were super talented, but just they didn't fit the mold of the program. They thought they were better than they were. They weren't good teammates. They didn't work hard. They didn't listen. And I just respectfully told their, told their families that this just wasn't the spot for them. Um, all the coaches here want to work with kids who want to listen and want to grow and want to get better and understand that everybody has room to grow. Kobe knew even all the way up to the day that he retired, he had stuff to stuff to work on. So let me know if we can help you guys in any way. We're here for you guys. Miss you guys. Um, we'll be check back in with you guys on uh, on Wednesday. Later. <laughs>